Alright. This is the first half of the first step of Grand Finals that is Borneo. They took this 2-0, so if you, any of you have any questions during the course of this, feel free to ask, that's what this is for, to learn um, and help everyone get better. So we're going to be looking at it from an overall perspective, so it's not just one POV. At any time if you have any questions about someone's positioning or what they did or why they did it or what time you should li be living or dying or when you should be going for the medic on any of the classes, on any of the maps at any point, Feel free to ask, that's why I'm doing this both live and I'll upload the VOD later, so that if you miss it, you can, uh, or you just need to refresh, it'll be up there. Um, but the point of it being live is that you can ask questions live and I can answer them. So this is Borneo, first half, first half of the entire Grand Finals. Uh, we're on uh, defense, and was it Rewind is on offense. So most of the time you'll, you'll see teams do sacks on really any stopwatch map on the start of offense. There's really not a ton of downside to be doing that at the start. Um, it's just something to do because the, the cart time usually has a ton of ways to go. Um, Borneo is a good example, Upward is another good example, where the cart time has a, a ton of uh, space to go. So most teams are just sack during this time while your cart pushers get the cart up. So there's not, really, there's not really a downside to it. We see them take a bunch of cart pressure early on. No sacks coming out of them, which is kind of interesting. But, you know, again, it's not mandatory. You can really do that um, whenever you want. Right now we see blue taking this slow. Um, the positioning from them is fine right now. Look, one thing to do is to take your, you have your flank clear through this, this left side and uh, take your side left side because this is a really good side line for your side to be in. Um, that's what they want to do. They're kind of slow to it though. Um, un unfortunately, I think that they didn't check a trap, so their med does drop. I think they were on crits, um, but it would have been interesting to see what that crits would have done anyways. But regardless. Um, they didn't all collapse. They could have. When, as soon as your medic dies, really on stopwatch, it's a you have to up to your team, where you can immediately bot in and try to recollapse on them to get any frags, or you just all back out. And that situation, they opted to all back out, which is fine. That's a play style sort of thing. But just know that you do have the option to be all going in during that time. They're still inching the cart, um, and they right. Oh, we still have an ad, but they're still getting good cart time here, which is good. Heavy dies, and now that they're two down with no heavy, um, and no calls from their spy, this might be getting bad. They do get. They do get me though. Shade does good as well. But even though Shade goes down, not having a demo on the defense means that they can get a ton of car pressure, and that takes it what's happening right now. Is that uh, our banner? Yeah, so Eddie pops the banner. And oh, both teams have a banner, actually. And they're just kind of floating through. They get the force out. This is really good for them. They got the force out, and they are four down. They're going to have a 70% of advantage right now. So if this is good, during this time on defense, as soon as you get your uber forced out, you need to be looking to leave. Um, if you don't leave, then just make sure you get the force or make sure you're in a position to where you can leave. You don't want to be getting caught out here. The force came out from blue, which is a really good. I don't know. I didn't see who forced that on the, on our side, but um, getting that force there was good, which means we could have we set up really set up for a second hold, and Ubers will be, if not even, um, an advantage in this case. Rain does a bomb. It's really fa fast bomb, and I like that bomb a lot. Um, if that gun would have been up faster, then he would have gotten, he would have died. But I think he he knew that the gun wasn't be up fast enough in time, so. He denied that. So now we're just seeing a standard defense come out from us. Um, they're getting really good cart time during this time. Uh, Exile playing in main. You don't see players play in main a ton because this is a really hard sideline to, to push on offense. Um, but it looks like a bunch of people from Rewind did die there. Kylo and Shay died. And getting, those are two like uh, amazing picks to be getting on defense. So this will just elongate the defense time on second. But again, we just see so much card time, and this card actually doesn't roll back. This is not a, like a slope where it traditionally falls back. So every single inch you get onto this ramp here matters. And the fact that their demo is able to play main is um, is really good. If your demo can play main, he has so much space to be stemming into uh, into corn, and you can just play card. You can kind of play like roll reversal, where they have to come into you, and you can just stick them off. So it's it's really good that Exile is getting all that space to do that there. Um, Rewind does know that they have a disadvantage, so during this time, teams can be sacking again. It's again, it's up to the team's play style. Here they're just opting to sit main, which is a good idea, and just um, pressure through corn, which is a good idea, uh, because you can just get continual spam. Um, unfortunately, I think Kahlo does stay in too long. Exile gets a bit aggressive, which again, this is kind of fine. They still have to do this side, so him dying there isn't super detrimental, but Kahlo staying in is kind of detrimental when you're trying to, try to play off your medic, so. Um, Fulu Barad is still on the side of defense. Kalos going to be spawning up back now. And if there's a time to sack, now would be the time on offense. Um, they still do have a good cart time. Cart's going to start rolling back. So if this cart gets to about the edge of this um, edge of this bridge, then we're, we're getting into problematic areas. But they are taking space really fast. I'm on a corn, and their heavy is getting healed. So this, they should be tapping cart now. 
Yeah, card's gonna get tapped back up, but didn't go back at all, or like that much at all. And uh, their combo, they did, they did do a banner, and they're on the right side speed. They have really good damage on the on rewind from rewind right now. And they're just getting this card up. You see this? Like they're just getting continual card time. Pablo got it almost up the entire ramp there. Shay's gonna take down Space Ghost, and all the, those picks, especially onto Space Ghost with the cart that much, means that fr from a combo perspective on defense, you have to start fighting this cart now. Spy gets caught out, he's distracting, and still the cart is still at the very top. No sniper on defense, and Shay gets banny. This is really good here. Two retaliation kills, but they're not, they're not gonna matter that, that much. When the combo's on cart, they did use. Um, Kalo was full health there. From an offense side, I. He. I don't. Yeah, Space was dead. I think, um. I think Kalo used there unnecessarily. He probably could have gotten away with not using there. So with the cart this close and without any pick classes, is a good idea to be doing a passive hold um, from the defense. But Shade getting that pick on Ernesti, Shade did absolute fire on second here. Um, that's going to cancel any intentions that we have for defense. Eddie sacking there is a fine idea if you just lost your medic. Again, even on defense, it's fine for maybe one of your two classes max. Usually your pick classes or your fine class would be going for the medic. But no one besides, like, I wouldn't say any more than two on Highlander should be sacking for the medic once your med dies on defense. On offense, you can collapse a lot more people and feed in for the medic if you if your med dies. So this advantage will be put on the side of, uh, on the rewind, about 50% advantage, which is good. You want to having an advantage coming into third because you can blitz third if you know how to push it correctly. So it's, we want to see where um, Kalo takes super here. Eddie getting taken down is going to alleviate taking this top right right here, which is really good. Oh, every single pick matters in Highlander. Uh, oh, they didn't check the corner. Shay and, and Kalo drop. So if there's, they can either, again, all in, or they can play defensive. And um, we've seen actually for the past three or four times, instead of like sacking in, they just they like to regroup, which is perfectly fine. Um, some instances, it's definitely better than others. Others, like if there's no gun, it's definitely better to just recollapse. But if there is a gun, like in this situation, they knew we had a gun. Um, it's better to just live because there's not there's not a really good chance you get, you're getting past an entire combo with hit scan and a gun. So this will put the advantage back into in some candy. And um, during this time, again, you can be running sacks. Running sacks is really really hard on third. So a lot of times you'll never see any teams run sacks. It is possible if your spy accepts a gun. But the most of the time, the meta to do is if you have a disadvantage on third, you try to play your sniper either main or right side. You can play left side sometimes if you want. Really just play around your sniper and see what he can do. Because if he gets some free picks, then every single pick and there removes a roll. Every single class on Highlander has a roll, and if you whatever your class you kill is removing that roll. They're getting aggressive across right side because Shay is super aggressive. He's going for the god shot. Oh, he misses it. I think he um he gets the god shot later on. Um, I think I hear Carson top right. Oh, I don't. I'm just <laughs> he jumped down. Izuki did win that. I'm chasing Shay and he dies. Um, this is just kind of just sloppy defense right now. We're trying to just um, not super organized here. I should be playing right side differently, um, but for the sake of this, it's it's fine. Um, but you, so we saw in that time they did delay sacks, which is fine because now they have all the spawners for Ubers. So we saw that they actually did do a sack the left side. They sent their combo spy and they sniper to go for a god shot, which is per perfect though. You have a 50% dis and you can go for god shots there and go for sacks. The gun. They can go to Zen on their side, actually, and they take an exchange top left. Um, this exchange would have been pretty decent. I wouldn't have River in this Uber. Um, I would never really take a Pyro in, a, in an Uber on up top here, because the more points you have, the worse your Uber is in, in that situation. Um, but you really don't want your Pyro lengthening that Uber or shortening that Uber for your side on offense. And because of that, now they're, they're three down. So, just for, like, what's called, multiing that Uber was not really good from their side. Um, they will be backing up, though. They do lose four in the process, though. Wow. So if they were healthy enough and they had players up, they could immediately repush for the post fight. Um, but because they, a ton of them died during the Uber, um, it didn't allow them to bot back in immediately because they would have only been five up against nine players in a gun. Shay winning the SVS right side. So this is what I'm saying. See what I just set up across the side? They got all their spawners and now they're completely flooding right side. Shay's got gets a drop on RC, and now this is an utter collapse. I I was playing too passive here. And um, that's one thing to note, is that um, when, if a team takes an exchange and they get their spawners, you need to make sure that each of your combo is, I guess on, on third in this case it would be each of your combo, but you need to make sure that every single entrance is locked down, because in that instance, as soon as they got their spawners, because they got, they, four of them died on offense, but as soon as all their spawners came back up and they we knew that we didn't have Uber as even, they immediately flooded through one side and it, it worked amazingly, and this, that's one thing Rewind's really good at. So that, if that's one thing that your team hasn't done is looking into, I'd say that's a really good strategy to use. Just never get buffs. Even if you die a ton during the, the like Uber exchange on offense, you can still come back in for the pose and delay it by about 10 seconds and get wait for your spawners. Because as long as your medic uses it at the exact same time, you know it's going to be even. They're not going to have. So if you get that gun down early on, getting that gun's the most important pick. And after that gun, nothing can automatically shoot your teammates on offense. So that was really well played by Rewind. 
because they killed Nursey, they know they had an advantage. They use them kind of early across right side. They might have been, I think Space was watching. Um, they go across right side. A big fatal error here is, yeah, so we, they, we were, we backed up right spawn instead of backing up left spawn. Usually in every single game mode that you play in TF2, whatever side they use from, you want to kite to the opposite side. Um, so in this instance, they use from right side, but we kind of just lingered right side instead of, uh, instead of kiting to left side and kind of playing with our pyro. Um, and that's what cost us this this last hold. Getting rolled on last is never a good thing in Borneo. Um, and especially with a defense of on third and second kind of strong, having a, a, a last rolled that fast is not what you want to see. So things we saw work for for offense with the first offense is um, blitz pushes. As soon as as Ubers fade, instead of re-pushing from the same side, they take some time, take about 10 seconds to get everyone buffed back up, and then rotate through the opposite side, which is a really good strategy. Um, we also saw from, from defense like a bit too passive. We saw Candy playing a bit too passive, so maybe allocating some players to play a bit more aggressively on uh, on defense will allow them to get spot off, spotted off easier, and that will allow you to counter that push that I just mentioned. So 9, 10 time is a pretty solid time on Borneo. I'd say an average time for Borneo is about 8.5 to 9 minutes. So that's definitely nothing to, uh, to scoff over, which will uh, put us back on offense here. So again, on offense, if you're just joining us, uh, the reason I'm streaming this is because if you have any questions about any of your classes at any, any time for any situation, like positioning, um, ask them here. That's why I'm doing this live. I'll upload it on the, the VOD later on. Um, this is the first half of Borneo. We'll be doing the second half of Borneo right after this, and we'll be doing Steel and Swift Water tomorrow. So again, on offense, on offense, you can be running sacks at all. It's up to your team. You can be running sacks, so you can be running, um, just trying to inching across the right side. Borneo and upward are maps where the cart time is really long, so, um, you do have time to be sacking. I go for a sack. Doesn't really do anything. But, um, Shea does go down, which is a sniper for them. So having no sniper on defense is gonna allow us to get a ton of space for post. So as soon as you run your sacks, and if they even like a lot of times if, if you run your sacks and you, even if they're not successful, it's a good idea for the rest of your players to be living. Because as long as the rest of your players are living for offense, you can be taking an exchange really fast. So spawns come back in from offense. Um, looks like they're trying to push across the right side. The defense from uh, from rewinds pretty solid here. This is a normal defense. Guns in, in main, except it's kind of more susceptible to spam than usual, but. It doesn't matter that much. All of them are in a good position. Carson's on top of the on the box, which is an interesting spot. Um, they're getting we're getting a lot of space for free here, though. Um, again, I mentioned playing too passive on defense, and we're kind of seeing that here, where the defense was playing super passive here, um, but that passiveness kind of baited them into uh, evil, which is their spy. So that passiveness was pretty good. Okay, and Carson getting the, the force up top. That's that's a really amazing there. And that's kind of. The inverse of what I just said. We we played too aggressive on offense, at least for first here, and because we played too aggressive, we have no one spotting behind us. So Carson's able to get an amazing force, and that's gonna elongate their uh, their defense on first here. They did drop three players in exile, being one of them is kind of crucial. Um, and you'll see that they're, they're gonna notice that exile is dead, and because exile is dead, that's gonna that's gonna mark them to back up. Even though they had a much better Uber, um, having like the, some of those critical players dead for for point is just can just mark the end of it. So we see some early aggression coming out from our side. Um, two to two go down. I'm trying to play aggressive main. Nothing too special. Just trying to get card time here. Shea getting Zuki there does matter a ton though because that means I've known to eat a ton of damage, and I should be dying here. Okay. On deep, let's go with the defense hold here. Yep, standard hold. They don't have a gun up yet, so they they are kind of susceptible to spam or yeah, to spam and bombs. Shea going down means that they should be expecting aggression main. Whenever players go down early on Borneo on second, you should usually always expect aggression through main from a combo side perspective, because no sniper means that they can play in this sideline for absolutely free and get a ton of card time. Both teams have Ubers now. Three down from the side of Rewind. The Ubers come in, we exchange, and they're flash. They flash four times. They flash a ton from Rewind here, and they wow. They actually get out. I didn't chase that. That would that would have been a wise idea to chase there. Um, with the Uber being that much better. From offense and it being a solo, and they flash flashing like three or four times, you can usually get away with chasing because you'll have a better Uber by at least a second. So, chasing there would have probably been a better idea. But regardless, the uh, rewind did come up with getting a really good repush for post here, and they managed to kill like t ton of the offense. Um, albeit they did lose Kala during that, and Nursey living is very the big the biggest thing apart that about about that push because even though we, five of us died on offense, Nursey did live. 
and no single window, that means that Kala knows that they have a diss side. So knowing that you have a diss side on uh, a defensive second, you usually want to be playing this, this side passively, and that's what they're doing here. This is a really good hold. And playing this side passively means that you can still deny cart, but you're not, you shouldn't be dying instantly if a bomb comes in. And he goes in, he gets River and Shade. No Pyro and no Cyber means that you can get a ton of card time for free, and if, the, if you do use, it won't get denied. Um, we, the Uber is uh, on Nurse's side right now, and they're still kind of pressuring if, uh, if, I, if I was alive on offense, I probably would have been able to catch him there. Um, but that's just one consequence of not of not living on um, on offense. Your life on offense matters just as much as it also, as it is on defense. The, the Uber coming in from Nursey is actually really weird, though. I didn't even um, uh, Nursey might have been weak. I didn't check her health, but uh, the Uber there, if she, if she was healthy, it would have been kind of quizzical because that was um, really no need to use there. Their combo was kind of already backing out. So now we're back on third. Um, same thing from, from from last time. Your team can either go left side or right side. Right side is usually a bit better, but left side is better for your sniper, so it's up to your team and which player you want to play around. With the Uber deciding, you can either be running sacks, so you can be playing your sniper on in main, right side or left side. So we're kind of doing a mix of both. Um, demo playing right side on the floor is kind of interesting. You don't see demos playing on the floor a lot, but he's going to back out. Um, so again, during offense, um, no matter what point you have, if you have downtime, you can be sacking or go playing with your sniper somewhere, or just playing off some sort of pick, because you don't want to be waiting for there for 40 seconds doing nothing. So just have, talking to your team and deciding what you want to do during that downtime is a really good idea. So during this time, we kind of just played around a sniper. We didn't, I think we ran like one or two sacks, but that was it. Um, so that once everyone came back up, we were ready to push. So Uber, we do have Uber now, so we've seen an exchange come through. We used pretty early, Uber comes out. Um, Nothing a ton yet. Shade going down is good, which means you can play main for post. A sniper going down on third means you can be playing on the floor for post as long as you get the gun because the sniper can't be sniping anything. Or rotate left side because sniper watching not watching left side means you can get a ton of space up the sniper on, on the stairs here. Um, and now we just see the reclaps. And the, we call, saw something similar from um, from Rewind where they used in through top right, took the exchange. They lost a ton of players, but they rotated left side. And by the time they rotated left side, the rest of their team was here. And they immediately flooded in. And we kind of did the same thing, but the opposite side. We used through right side. Um, and we, we, we took the exchange, we got the, we got a good pick during that, and that was, uh, that was Shay. And then we immediately re-pushed through top right. Uh, thank you, Micah Lele, for, uh, following. So now there's an advantage coming out on last. Um, advantage on last is something that's really abusable. Um, and that's also something we saw them do. Three minutes of push last is definitely a ton of time. So, playing a last is one of the most important things you can do on a stopwatch map, because that's, it's the best... It's usually the best put or best hold for them on defense because they're right next to their spawn. So with this Uber round, it looks like we're opting to go right side. Again, left or right side is really up to your team. It depends on uh, on where their sniper is. Oh, this deny from River is amazing. River playing that close and did not reflecting on the railing means that meant that our Uber got instantly denied. And, and having an Uber on the floor here is really bad. We did get two picks, we're three down, but now we're just it's a reclaps here. That was excellently played by Rewind. River de denying that Uber there might have actually solo won them this last. Because if River would have died there, or if River just wasn't in position, that Uber would have gotten so much more aggressive on them towards this right side, and they probably would have suffered a lot more fatalities. But that, that reflecting, knowing the angle to reflect them, not into this, uh, what's it called, like railing, is was an amazing play from River. Similar reflect can be done on the right side. If they go on the far right, um, you can be have your pirate trying to reflect him on the floor. Just note that your pirate playing that aggressive does run the risk of him, uh, you know, dying. So I wouldn't advise to always doing that. So because we had an Uber to set, looks like we offered to do a sack wave. Nothing. I don't think I actually think any picks came out through that sack wave. So you know, nothing. You, nothing you can really do. Just something to do during the downtime. Spawn's coming back in from our side. We're going to be equaling out a bit soon, so now we're going to have to take an exchange. Two minutes left. Time's kind of winding down at this point. Um, so on offense, you don't want to be stalling any time. You just want to take the exchange when you're down on this much time. Um, both our pick losses going down is not going to help that at all. So you can either delay this push until you, your pick losses come back in, um, or you can just go straight in. So I think during this time, the call was to wait for this pick losses. If you look at the defense coming in right now, this is an excellent defense. A level 3 gun up top. Everyone's pretty established. Everyone has really good buffs. Their heals are amazing right now. Um, this is, uh, we don't see any holes right now. We see Shea playing a bit aggressively that can be abused, but besides that, we don't see a ton of other things that can be abused. Shea going down uh, really fast, as I, as I said. Him playing that, I started playing that aggressively. He's susceptible to getting, uh, to dying there. Three picks during the Uber. If if we can play this post correctly, that'll be amazing. But wow, we saw three people immediately die. Exile took on Space Ghost. 
and I think the flank took down our flank over on the left side. And what what an amazing Uber like, like even though how that Uber looked amazing, we got three picks instantly. Having our, our flank like desynced, or like, having our flank like not have buffs during that, or wh whatever the miscommunication was, is gonna really come back to bite us here. Because if let's say like our flank was was healthier, or they didn't take that fight, that we would have been fighting a 69 for during the the post fight, and that's why post fights matter so much. You don't want your players dying during the Uber. You want your players to be anyone who's not Ubered during the Uber exchange wants to be living and recommitting for the post once your main colors and your combo call it. Um, and a flank dying during that time is going to mean that instead of fighting a, a 9v6, now we're fighting a, a, a 6v6 against a level 3 gun. Um, and you, you never want that. So we're running across the right side. It's 15 seconds. The Uber comes out. They don't have yet. But again, this this denial from River is amazing here. The, all the denials from, from River are, are amazing here. And with only 8 seconds on the cart, um, we know that we have to be full committing. And they use on cart, and that's going to solidify their first round. So major points here. We saw River... I mean, I, for first push, I would say he solo handily won them the first push. There was an uber advantage from our side. Um, let's see here. We saw the full uber advantage come from our side. Well, not full uber, about a 50% advantage. And River positioning himself over on that on that railing on catwalk denied the uber completely because getting launched to the floor on offense like that is absolutely fatal. Alright, looks like the setup time is locked, but that's what we want. So we use him through this right side without a 50% advantage. One person died during it, but that's kind of negligible. And what River said is River stood right here, and he reflected. And most of the time, this actually doesn't work, because your body will clip to the other half of this railing. But he had the angle lined up, and I guess memorized to where he reflected, and he la and we landed on the floor. And an Uber landing on the floor is going to be about 40% at this time, because you're going gonna to use halfway through here. And having 40% on the floor means that by the time you walk up here, your Uber is going to be faded. So it's up to you. If you have the picks, you can recommit. But in that time, we didn't have the picks because that denial came in super early. So that won them like almost single-handedly, I'd say, the first push. The second push, we ran sacks in between, and then... Um and then we did an exchange, and it was really good. We got three picks instantly. And if we would have, if everyone would have lived and backed up, and then repushed, it would have been a six v nine. Um, but I think there was a miscommunication with with Etni or something, or Space Ghost was was a bit too aggressive on this top left. And just those two or three players dying just instantly during the Uber like that meant that instead of fighting a six v nine that it was for about two seconds, we were going to be having to fight a six v six against a level three gun, and that's not what you want to have happen. So making sure that your combo is synced with your other players in flank, and make sure that they're backing up and not overextending during the Uber is really good. Because if, if you have all of your players live during those Ubers and then recollapse for the post fight, it's going to be amazing, especially with a 6v9. If we would have lived at 6v9 and then wait for post, get buffs, and then recollapse, it would have been uh, amazing as a push. Good points for defense. Um, we saw them, they, they were relied on their pyro a lot, which in that case was good. Um, the only downside of relying on your pyro is that if he does die, you need to find either ways to kite that Uber or uh, deny that Uber otherwise. We saw a ton of uh, instant repushes on third, where one team would use on one side and instantly repush the other, or vice versa. So being aware, or, or having splitting your combo to watch both sides, or having your flank hard watch one side and having your combo like hard watch on the other side is a good way to deny all the entrances there, uh, because if both entrances are locked, you know they can't get through for those instant repushes. So those those are some good points on defense. We didn't see a ton of a crazy stuff come out from first and second, but just know that if your sniper does die on defense, a lot of times combos and offense are going to love to go track and try to hard spin you in the corn, because with no sniper here, they can't be afraid of these sightlines. So if you have any questions, um, again, feel free to post them at any time. Now, now we have about two minutes downtime, so if anything specific pops up, go ahead and ask. And if not, we're going to be starting the second half of Borneo right now. So, it looks like we're on offense again. Um, and they're going to be starting off defense again because... Was it you do like you do what you just did twice, I think. So, like, if you end the half on defense, then you play defense on the start? Yeah, yeah. So that's how the second half is going to be going out. Again, on first, me running sacks. Um, maybe just getting card time or trying to live and, and play aggressive. Up to your team how you want to do that. All of them have their pros and cons. Um, which is up to your team and how you want to play the very first start of stopwatch maps. Mission begins in 30 seconds. Begins 
Um, nothing super crazy from their first defense on first. Um, other than the fact, the, uh, the biggest point would be that Carson was able to get through this top left and just bot through and get the force on a Nursey, and that was an amazing play. Um, and that was just because we played too aggressively and too many died. Oh, Jacob got it. <laughs> There's no... Okay, Zach's coming, Jacob does die. <laughs> um, Zach doesn't get a ton. So, that's fine. Sack comes in, getting car time during it. Good way to kill the time. Space Ghost dies at near the tail end of that sack, so not preferable, but again, not going to be super detrimental. That was spawns. Scratchy dying there is, is unnecessary. Once your sacks come in and, and end, um, do, no matter fail or success, you usually want your players to be living there. Um, Space Ghost losing the SVS again. Nothing you can really do about that. Banny getting too aggressive. Um, he, that's a time where... He really shouldn't be dying. We already had our spawns and our combos already aggressive through the right side, so him dying there is kind of really unnecessary. But we're, we're dying a ton of scattered on first here. That's one thing on offense that's really important. And Shea gets, gets me. Wow. Yeah, scattering a ton on first here is going to, like, every single second matters as we just saw. And, like, it was down to, like, the eight second wire last round. So. Get egg. Every single pick that they get on this first is going to contribute to be to seconds. So Shea getting that snipe there and all, all the scattering, and now we're like uh, two, three down now. This is really good, and they're they're playing this well. The Uber came in when we were three down. Um, they use here when you're three down on offense and you use. Um, I would have liked to see Kalo milk ideally from his perspective, um, because they're you know you're playing a six v nine. You have the the player and the gun at advantage. You can kind of just kite. Um, him using there seemed very forced. He really didn't need to. I think he just kind of felt pressured. So I would say that was a bit of a misplay from Kalos' part. And him using there is going to allow them to like solo get this. Uh, allow us to get the solo first cap. Exile playing a ton aggressive, jumping out of corner and getting headshot. Shea going down as well to mean that we can play aggressive through man. And again, same thing I just said. Uh, having your cyber die on defense means that your combo can play super offensive onto uh, onto bridge here uh, from corn. We see cars to peek through the through ramp a bit, which is one thing that combos like DK love to do. They, they love to be peeking, peeking this ramp if you try to go uh, on car. Right now we're just taking car. Um, five down from the side. They're kind of just bleeding one by one. Um, and he does kill Kalo Karai. So one thing to note is we haven't really seen a ton of this last half, but at least in this half, whenever your medic dies, especially on offense, um, you want to make sure you know, when the enemy medic dies, um, you want to make sure that your medic is hard, hard being hard tanked. Um, just have everyone play around and make sure that they can't die super fast. Because if your medic dies after their med dies, it's going to put them at, at a slight advantage. And they're, you're going to have no heals trying to, uh, you know, try and, trying to either defend or offend. And either one of those is, is terrible. So Uber Advantage is going to be coming in from us. Um, with this Uber Advantage, whenever you have an Uber Advantage in Highlander, you, want, you don't really want anyone dying. It really goes for anything in TF2. You don't want anyone dying during these advantages, so... Um, this push is kind of is kind of slow actually. Um, I think it got delayed because of picks. We used really early. I'm trying to jump in and take clear the space. Their power gets onto the floor. We have really good damage right now. Um, I think this is a good time for us to recommit. This is one time where you don't really need to rotate and recommit. It looks like we're playing back, playing for heals. We do get the gun during that, which means that the, our players can get aggressive through main. And looks like we want to retake through this right side. So that's that's one thing that we didn't see last round. Where last one we saw both teams rotate with the repushes on third, but during this they just backed up all the way and we got the gun, which means we, you can kind of just play upper and play defensive here. Uber coming in from them, up, up in crater, and um, they were able to take that repush from a d defensive perspective. They were able to take that repush because we were already two down at that point and we knew we had already used. So from an offensive perspective to counter this, you either want to be backing up all the way because you know they have an advantage or you need, you need regardless of what situation happens, you want your medic getting out. And actually, I don't I don't know how Nursey got out during that, um, but our combo did, quote unquote, we, you, you could count that as a sack. We did get caught out during that. But now that they know, now they know on defense that they have an Uber to set and they're playing this well to, to the fact that their are their meds are already, already out. Pyre trying to go for a play is going to get cut out. Um, and during this time, you want to make sure you have cap time during this. They're they're pressuring hard main. We see a ton of pressure to main. These players can actually die. We want to see some aggression from the left side. If they're doing a passive hold and you have an advantage, usually the best idea is to just go into them. But I think they're actually giving this up. Yeah, they pull a gun, and this is still an advantage for last year. So if it's still an advantage for last, and it's kind of a hefty advantage, where it's about 50% like this, you can be rolling this all through top left. But the biggest thing is, if you're trying to roll an Uber into last, you have to be very aware of the cart time. The cart is one singular straight track into Borneo. 
but th this last track is the hardest to get through because of the gun. So it looks like, uh, are we doing it? Okay, we opt out of it because we recognize that our car time is way too, way too far back to be doing it a push. If your cart was super fast, time steering cart from the time you, you uh, cap third and you had an advantage and blitz through left side, that that's fine. But you need to make sure that you have car time during this. Trying to pressure the main, we just flood through main here. The Uber comes out. It does a sack actually? Interesting. So out of this, we got cart time, and Shay went down. So Shay going down means that our supper can get a ton of pressure through the main, and anyone else who really wants to get pressure through the main can can be doing so at ease um, until Shay's back up. Full Uber advantages can be pushed through either side, it's up to your combo and up to their positioning. If their supper is top left, go right side, vice versa. Um, so I think the call here is to go through right side. So on a defensive perspective, we want to see River holding that same position. They are called left side. Their demo goes down immediately, which is good. The bombs come in. Pablo, the scout's going down. We have a ton of spam right now. Oh, we saw our players on card die really fast, so wow. I think we were just coordinated with our combo, with our card pushers during this. Because again, we saw this Uber. The demo died instantly. The dispenser, the gun, the pyro, and everyone died instantly through the top right, but... We just saw that what they did is they, instead of focusing the combo top left that was Ubered, they all of them jumped down a cart, and that was an excellent play there. Because that meant that our everyone who was on the cart would have died instantly, and the Uber players wouldn't have mattered because they're invincible anyways. So that was actually really well played for them. Um, I guess that's the one thing that your team can be using um, if you ever wonder what to be doing during an exchange like that. Heavy dying on cart. We're seeing a ton of sacks for the cart right now because they're heavy to die. It's a uh, 6v6 right now. We're taking aggressive through top right. And right now we're just kind of playing spam and river. Again, getting that reflect on me is going to completely cancel that push because if I would have been alive, um, that would have been much better for us. A 6v6 with a demo on offense is a much better than a, six, than a 5v6 without a demo on offense. Pirate bombing to the cart, trying to get as much space as possible. But now we see the entire defense bombing for the cart to block it. The cart is on the. Uh, is hanging tooth and nail right now. But. Because they were fast enough, they were able to block it. And one thing that we see um, Rewind doing, which usually fails a ton on teams, is playing the cart on, on last and just body blocking it. A lot of times playing cart on last is usually going to come back to bite you because you're just in a sideline. Like on Swiftwater, you have complete height disadvantage. And I guess this one is kind of similar to Swiftwater. Um, and same thing with like, every other map. If you're on the cart on a defense perspective, they know where you're at. And you really are easily getting countered, just like we see cars in there. Um, but Carson able to stand on cart so much that he was able. To, the cart's actually rolling back now, and me and any dying on the flanks not going to help that case at all. So even though those, these Ubers were even, if we would have lived, ideally we would have just gone through right side and exchanged because with the cart turned that that aggressive and with no heavy to be blocking the cart, then exchange would have been amazing because after the heavy Z, who who else is going to jump on the cart? Anyone who jumps on the on the cart at that point, I think I can get focused. So those the, those picks from Shay on on. Me on the combo offensively are, are doing him so much work right now, and right now we're kind of just trapped. Spy going down and still no heavy on carts. This is going to get sniped as heavy as we can going down, and Pablo gets the force. This is an amazing force here, and this is going to be an absolute terrible Uber. Yeah, see this see there. Defensively from Kalo Karai, Kalo took zero damage during the offensive Uber, and he used like he. I just feel like Kalo Karai is kind of getting forced into these situations that he doesn't want to be using but he just feels inclined to use I don't uh, defensively because right now they could be holding this right now with a full uber advantage and that would be that would uh, that'd be wondrous um, but not having that um, not having a full uber advantage is gonna make things a bit more shaky but it's doable we see exit back on minis from from defense this means that you usually want someone playing cart and that's what Carson's doing Shea going down on defense Oof. Means that you can get a ton of spam through top left, and actually, that's actually what we're doing. We're trying to blitz top left. Demo goes down, um, Cyber goes down, heavy. The combo from the red side is completely down, but I get counter bombed. And again, getting these picks on the demos offensively is going to do a ton of work. So now, again, we see this. We see our car pushers are disconnected with their combo, and the, those two being disconnected means that anyone who's on the anyone who's separated is going to get focused. So in that case, the car pushers were getting focused because our combo was we couldn't, couldn't aggress at all. We did get Forest Nursey used on it. Eddie. Eddie got, uh, I think, one pick. Um, but yeah, we just see just continual discombobulation from our offense here. And you see that as soon as the one person who blocked the cart was dead, the cart was easily capped in. Um, we, as we saw earlier, we had a, it was an even. Um, 
both medics were even on the right side, and I think our space ghost got Carson immediately on cart. We should have just exchanged right there, but I thought we we just sat here hesitating. And one thing you want to do, you don't want to do on any game mode of of TF2 is to hesitate. Hesitating only leads to confusion, and it usually makes everything worse. I've never seen hesitating contribute a lot to success. So, making sure your team doesn't hesitate is a good idea. Some things that we saw on offense there was um, blitz repushes from the exact same side if they're playing passive instead of rotating. Um, and on defense, we saw a lot of work playing or be been played around um, players jumping down to cart and the plus and minus to that is that if you have players to jump on cart, you're gonna you're 100 percent gonna block the cart. But the downside for that is the after fight or or the the, or the post after the ubers are done after the whole main battle is fought, um, those players on cart are gonna be the first ones to go if they're if anyone on offense tries to re pressure. So being aware of your cart pushers and being aware of what your players are gonna be doing for the post if they are blocking cart is very important. Same thing on offense. We could be seeing some sacks here. Um, anything you can really do anything during this first 20 seconds. This cart has a has a long ways to go from the start, so you be really wanting anything. We're not seeing. Looks like rewind's not often to do sacks. Once more, they're trying to get some fast aggression, and that's what Exile's doing right here. Nothing interesting yet, but they did opt they did bring their medic out. Callow drop there. Um, and getting a drop again on defense. Whenever you get a medic drop, you need to be hard watching your medic, because if you want to see a recommittal from their offense, it's gonna be now. Um, looks like Exile did try to bot in. Oh, and Carson gets in. Oh wow, they they did force and and I died during that. Yeah, that that was no one's fault. That was just re really good timing from Evil there, gonna killing me during that fight and getting the, the forest that was an amazing sack wave and one thing that was interesting about that sack wave is it, is it wasn't immediate that you see a ton from every from like a bunch of teams they delayed it by by a really good like time like like, like seven seconds they delayed it then they had one person go in cleared the trap and then another person come in right after with the spy and the, a really delayed sack um is kind of very interesting there and that worked amazingly in their favor because not only did they get the use but they got five picks including the demo during that and that's that was an amazing sack that we just saw from from we rewind so if you ever if things ever go sour on first um look to do either instantaneous re like sacks and repushes or delay them like that it's up to your team's play style space goes dying um it's gonna mean that now our combo is kind of in a tight position here on corn because now their cyber can just be hard to this cross and we don't have really anyone else to can contest them yeah, from an offense side here, if their sniper dies, you don't want to be spy checking there. Spy checking is going to block the sideline, and actually, because Nursey didn't actually cross, which is interesting, I don't blame her, because I would have assumed the sniper was watching, but that's one thing to note, that if, if Nursey did cross, because I cross, if you if you win the SVS on second on offense, um, you need to be hard scoping this. Your players need to be watching the spy for you, because if you hard scope the sideline, if their combo's in corn, they're absolutely caught, they can't do anything. So a two minute, two and a half minute time for the first two points on Borneo was absolutely amazing. So um, the force did come out from offense though. So from on defense, as soon as you get the force on anything, you want to back up instantly, and that's what we see here. So now we're now defense is kind of in a tight position. They're kind of forced to be having a a good third hold here. And when you have to have a good hold during any stopwatch, you need everyone to just play to live here. So don't play, don't play more passive, and you know don't don't change the way you play, but just be considerate of you living the entire time, because the most important thing in any game mode in TF2 is your life. Presence, presence can do more than actual work in a lot of cases. Having the, the presence and the threat of a sniper can sometimes be more effective than the than the actual sniper himself. So just be aware of that. If it's seen uber advantage coming in from defense, and I get it. If a defense side has uber advantage, you want to times you can be either be seeing sacks or you can be playing with your sniper somewhere. Um, the side from rewind wasn't actually playing with Shay there, but Shay did get a really good quick soap on a banny. Um, it looks like they're kind of opting to do like a, a half sack. They're kind of just aggressing here, and that's another thing you can do: just be aggressing in general. A really weird position from Exile. <laughs> He's gonna get get jumped on. I've never seen that before, but. Um, again, you need, that's it's completely fine for him to do that though because they they still don't have yet still 30% dissed. 
Well, we see the sniper getting super aggressive though. Shay's gonna die. Um, the soldier was hiding and he did get any. So this is actually a pretty decent sack wave. They got two picks, no pyro, no soldier during this. If they want to take an exchange, it, they have to blitz it. Oh, they are gonna blitz it. This is really good. This is exactly what rerun should be doing here. When you have this many picks on on offense, you want to go instantly off that because you know their, their spawn is gonna come in. Unfortunately, they don't get a ton of this Uber. On defense, we actually probably didn't need to use there. Um, I think the biggest threat why we used there was because of Carson. And Carson actually wreaked havoc for post there. I, I, I ignored him, but he actually got the gun and did do a ton of damage. Carson and Pablo is going to go down. That's going to be three different side of offense, which means that um, they're really pressured here. Oh, they're really weak on the right side. Pyro going down. Rain did get me, which is a really good pick. Getting no demo on any, anything on defense. It's amazing. Um, but they did die a ton to it from it. So we saw the same thing that Ryan loves to do, um, especially on Borneo, is they take an exchange and they wait for their spawners and they immediately blitz in through one side, except that time it was more, it was easily countered, um, or at least, at least it was better countered than last time, um, because I, I kind of, I saw it coming. So seeing patterns in the way your the enemies plays and is, is going to be really good because there, if I would have let them do the same thing they did last time, we would have, we would have already been about out to last by this time. So just noticing patterns there is, is very important. This offense is very good here. They we we are had a really bad positioning here. We actually don't have your nurses at 90. Oh, when when a, when a medic doesn't have like that, when you ever see a medic back up from an Uber fight, most of the time that means that they don't have. So chasing or bombing in during that's a really good idea. Um, the Uber uh, Uber recoil collapse comes in from defense. Um, and this is kind of just standard. I don't see anything super crazy yet, except that they do have really good car time. They got really good car time from from re rewind on the side there. So there's two holds you're going to be doing. It looks like right now we're doing a passive hold. And I don't know if we're going to be committing to this or not. But the most of the time, well, what marks the hallmark of a passive hold is that if the card is super aggressive and or if you have an uber disadvantage, you can be doing that. Um, one of them is true. In this case, the card's kept very close, but we do have an advantage. So playing this passive with an uber advantage can be detrimental because they can just cap the card in and then now you're holding last with an advantage instead of third. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. That could have been defended. We actually probably could have, with, with two picks now, with no engineer, no heavy, without a physical steel, we probably could have been committing to block this car here. It was actually kind of interesting how we um, opted to back up. And playing around your sniper is what you want to be doing here. Whether you're on offense or on defense, of trying to break a forward th a forward hold on third or last, like a, a pass hold on third or a forward th hold on uh, last, you either want to be having your sniper play your valley on offense or have your sniper be playing on one of these steps on defense because this, these sidelines are amazing for your sniper. We're seeing some sack waves come in from the offense. This is a fine thing to do because having a combo aggressively on the defense means that they're really susceptible to uh, bombs more so than they are on the actual last because it's last much more choky. Um, but again, we see some sacks again. I wouldn't really go for those sacks there with the cart, with the cart nearing the entrance, um, and with both medics having it at the same time. I would have, I would not have ran that double sack. Or that, that second sack. The first sack was fine, even though it was even. But that second sack I would not be doing um, after your medic already has had for a while. So now on defense, um, we want to be denying this Uber here. Um, if, if we don't deny this Uber, it's going to be terrible um, for the post here. And that's what that's what Ubers are all about. Whenever it's even, it's all about the post. Looks like Rewind trying to opt take it slow with Shay. Combo is, is actually really situating themselves left side. They use pretty early, and there is no denial. We, we actually see, yeah, but Bliv playing that passive is kind of very detrimental because, again, getting that the reflex on the card is going to matter a ton. And during this time, they have amazing cap time. One, two, they've had three times for the past eight seconds on card. This is really good for them from the offense right now. If they can repurch from offense, on, offense fast, it's going to be amazing. I die. Having no demo on the defense, especially last, is very, very bad. But we do see the aggression come out after I die. Um, which means that they will be able to hold this for a bit on. And you kind of go for something, I think, a bit cheeky to chase and is going to get bottled. But, yeah, I think the biggest detriment there is that having no power to deny that Uber. Denying Uber is especially on last of Borneo, where if you reflect once, you have an instant high disadvantage with the Uber, is so is is worth so much. And giving that up is, is, is pretty detrimental. So now we see Uber is... Um, are, th are thought to be even right now, but they actually, they've been building really well on Rewind, and they want to take this fight immediately. With, without a sniper on defense, they want to be taking this fight immediately. They use, they use it really fast, so we should be kind of left side. We do kind of left side, and the card's rolling back. The card's getting timed now. We don't have yet. Z Zuki dies. Oh, I die. They get me. That Again, that pick's amazing, and no, no matter what would have happened at this point, four down and no demo, this is going to be the end of it. 
and they were just trying to block down. That was an amazing repush there. Uh, Callow built so well on that offense there that it allowed him to take space on the right side very, very fast. Let me show you that. Let me show you why that why that worked. Because that was a really good repush. I didn't even know that they were building that well. That's a one call you don't see a ton in Highlander. It's usually done in sixes. Um, or like even fours, I guess. Um, but Medic's building. Um, I don't think he was building uh, with Pablo. But they were building off damage. And just taking that exchange. Because why not? You want to go as fast as possible. Is not a bad idea. So they got Space Ghost. Which is our sniper really early on in this last push. And their combo was on this right side. And what it is, they cleared the they cleared the six. They're all buffed up, and they immediately took the push through the side. So the biggest thing that will counter an Uber again on, on especially on Borneo last is a pirate. Having a pirate play close right side and getting at least the first twenty percent of an Uber is going to knock them down to the floor, and that's going to make this Uber very very bad because now they have to either walk back with the Uber or just leave. We didn't see that on either of the exchanges that we saw from left side or from right side. So not having a Bliv deny those was actually pretty pretty bad but what made it amazing is that during this push through the right side we did not have yet and they got our combo during it and they were able to get cat during that time and they were just able to completely roll this if your team gets gets uber and all of you are ready and you get a good pick like that just go because at that point like like what what, what reason is there not to push you have a player pick a, a very vital player pick at that and if all of you are healthy might as well go and so that was a really fast-paced, like, amazing push from them. They thought super fast on their feet, and that was an amazing push from Borneo.